I'm Kay and I'm a late bloomer. Thanks for coming back for part two of Growing Sweet Peas. Things took a turn in mid-January. Let's see what happened. The sweet peas seemed to thrive through the cold snap of December, but that was followed by a heat wave of temperatures in the 80s. It's never that hot here. The weather affected some vines more than others. In late January, I assessed my pea patch, harvested peas, and did a little maintenance. This section here is all snow peas again. So I could probably just take all of these off and put them in a stir fry. Now I just take these little feelers and I feed them into a bit of the netting and hope it catches because when your space is limited, you've got to keep things neat. These look a little pale, but they're perfectly formed. So let's have a snack. As for the purple peas, these are our sweet magnolia purple pea. This pea pot is short, but it's done. I'm going around the corner, this little row, and I have to call these weeds because I did not plant them, but this is actually wild arugula. It's just going to get stepped on, so I'm probably not going to want to eat it. And I've got plenty over there. So wild arugula really spreads. So look what was hiding under that arugula. This is a cutworm or grub, and they sleep right under the surface. And they just cut your plants down. They don't. They don't cut down weeds. They just cut down the good stuff. Now, what is this? This came up on its own, and I do not know what it is. But it's all over. This looks like mildew. This could be because I wa I did not, once again, did not get the drip irrigation installed before I planted. So I've been watering with a hose towards the base of the plants. And since it's only the end of January, and technically I have two full months to go on peas, well, we shall see. This group of snow peas looks beautiful at the top, but the bottom looks terrible. Now, since it never freezes here, spores of powdery mildew aren't killed. So does that mean they're in the soil and they're working their way up, cutting off nutrients as they go? You can solarize the soil to kill the spores of powdery mildew, but that means covering an area in plastic for four to six weeks in bright sun. And if you have a really small garden like I do, how can you afford to do that? Dig up somebody else's yard. When you see that they have popped open <laughs> on the vine, you know you waited too long to harvest. Late bloomer lesson, don't bite off more than you can chew. I have a tendency to plant much more than I know how to take care of. By now, some vines were covered in white spots, so I harvested what I could. Okay, this is ridiculous. <laughs> this is supposed to be a snow pea. If you leave snow peas on the vine, they just get bigger and bigger and bigger and tougher and tougher and tougher. I'm still going to chop these up and stir fry them though. Take your snow peas off the vine before they look like this, okay? It happened so fast. In three weeks, my vines spotted and shriveled from the ground up. As you can see, some of these vines are just too far gone. What I'll do is I'll cut out some of the vines and hope I still get production on some others. I'm going to spray the mildew and see if it's not too late. Last week I mixed up a batch of all-natural spray and gave my plants a good going over. Better late than never, right? There's still some life at the top of the vine, so I'm hopeful. <laughs> I'm always hopeful. <laughs> I think these are done for. But this is all-natural, so I'll give it a try. Oh, look at that. 
After I sprayed, because I like to do things the hard way, I found a terrific article on powdery mildew. I learned that certain sprays are preventative and others are eradicants. Once powdery mildew is established on the plants, and I would call this established, you need an eradicant to kill the fungus, not a preventative, which my spray was. <laughs> Since the spores of powdery mildew are carried by wind and rain, and you probably know that California is in a serious drought, I'm going to blame the winds of January for my infestation. I also could have transported the spores myself from vine to vine. One more thing is, you see how I planted these seeds over here, and the netting wound up over here? They're about six to eight inches away. And what happens is when they shoot up and they start gaining all this weight above in the higher in the vine, if they haven't grabbed onto the trellis, then they make a crink. Because the netting sinks down with the weight of the vines. And then they just lay on the ground and stay wet. Powdery mildew is the most common problem for growing sweet peas and a tough thing to eradicate. Prevention is the best key. Recommendations are to water at ground level. I'm guilty for not getting my drip irrigation in before I planted my seeds. Plant in sunny areas. Plant disease resistant varieties. And don't crowd your plants and spray a preventative at the first sign of trouble. Peas like moist, well-drained soils, proper aeration, and direct sunlight. With the topsy-turvy weather, pre-existing spores, crowded conditions, and spraying city water loaded with chemicals and salts at the base of the vines left them vulnerable and helped spread the mildew. There may be a combination of fungal diseases like gray mold, white mold, or rust. There's no way to know for sure without having it tested. It's two days later and we've just had a much needed rain shower. I came out to evaluate the vines and it looks like the mold is almost to the top. So I have to make the hard call. I'm gonna take all the vines out and hope for better luck next year in a different location. Bottom line, I love sweet peas and I'll try again. Maybe I'll dig up my neighbor's front yard and solarize this area. Tune into Late Bloomer to find out. What's your secret for growing sweet peas? I'd love to know. Please leave me a comment, and while you're down there, please subscribe. I'm Kay, I'm a Late Bloomer. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Come on, baby, come on. Give me some peas, give me some peas, give me some peas. Let's try that again without spraying the camera. That was a hummingbird. Did you, did you?